Gospel according to Luke chapter 4. Then Jesus began to say to all in the synagogue in Nazareth, Today the scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. All spoke well of him and were amazed at the gracious words that came from his mouth. They said, Is not this Joseph's son? He said to them, Doubtless you will quote to me this proverb, Doctor, cure yourself, and you will say, Do here also in your hometown the things that we have heard you say in Capernaum. And he said, Truly I tell you, no prophet is accepted in the prophet's hometown. But the truth is, there were many widows in Israel in the time of Elijah, when the heaven was shut up for three years and six months, and there was a severe famine over the land. Yet Elijah was sent to none of them, except to the widow at Zarephath in Sidon. There were also many lepers in Israel in the time of the prophet Elisha, and none of them was cleansed except Nahum the Syrian. When they heard this, all in the synagogue were filled with rage. They got up, drove him out of town, and led him to the brow of the hill on which their town was built, so they might hurl him off the cliff. But he passed through the midst of them and went on his way. The Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. Grace and peace to you from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Be the change you wish to see in the world. An eye for an eye leaves the whole world blind. You can't shake hands with a clenched fist. Does anybody know who said all these quotes? Do you know? Close. She said Martin Luther King Jr. I'll get to him. It was Gandhi. Mohandas Gandhi is from India. He was a lawyer, politician, social activist, and a writer who became the leader of the nationalist movement against the British rule of India. He became considered the father of his country. He's internationally known for the doctrine of nonviolent protest to achieve political and social progress. He started out his work just trying to fight for the rights of Indians as they were second-class citizens in this British Empire. But his work later transformed into going entirely against the British regime, and he worked hard against the injustices of his people, who did not have the right to vote, own property, or even walk in the streets after dark. To his fellow Indians, he was known as Mahatma, or great soul, and huge crowds would gather to see him. He worked diligently to unite diverse communities, regardless of race or religion, and he brought them together to live as equals, including treating his own family as equal to everyone else. As you can imagine, it was not easy work. It was met with resistance and violence, but he never retaliated with violence, and he never used violence as power. He told his people that, they couldn't, that hate, that they could not rise out of hate. And he was known throughout the world for, during his life, and possibly even more so in his death. He was murdered by someone who detested his tolerance for work and peace, and he was nominated for the Nobel Peace Prize five times. Perhaps you know this one. I say to you today, my friends, so even though we face the difficulties of today and tomorrow, I still have a dream. It is a dream deeply rooted in the American dream. I have a dream that my four little children will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. Martin Luther King, Jr. Someone that I'm pretty sure needs no introduction to you also a peacemaker, a leader in our own country for civil rights movement from the 1950s until his death in 1968. Like Gandhi, he was a leader of nonviolent tactics. He organized marches and boycotts, but never resulted to violence. 
His leadership was key for ending segregation in our country. And he was known around the world for using peaceful approaches for big problems. Also assassinated, he was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize in 1964. Both of these men set out to cross boundaries that people had put in place. And they both worked to bring light to those who were outside the boundaries, to bring justice and equality to all people, regardless of race or religion or economic status. And they cared for those on the fringe, and they worked hard to get them off the fringe. And our gospel today seems similar to both of those men's lives. Jesus shows up in his hometown and at first impresses those who must have watched him grow up. But while his message at first impressed, it did turn to disdain. Now it might be helpful to remember exactly what was on that scroll that he was reading off. We actually heard that in last week's gospel. But here it is again, just, a couple, just one verse. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Jesus doesn't just show up in his hometown to show favoritism to those he grew up with. He reminds them that he has come for all. That is good news. That he comes for the poor, the captives, the blind, the oppressed, for all. But what sort of reaction does this crowd have? Well, they want to throw him off a cliff. The good news he brings isn't exactly the good news they wanted to hear. It means it crosses those boundaries that they themselves have made. Now this is still good news for us in a couple ways. One, that Jesus came for all people, for you, no matter where you find yourself. The other good news is that this kind of love that Jesus brings for all people will prevail, and it will prevail through us. Now given the two examples I gave already, we know it's not easy, and, and most likely not all of us will be at the level of Gandhi or Martin Luther King Jr., but we are at some level just the same, and we need it. God has given us a great capacity to love. Most of us here probably know that love is really more action-oriented than emotional. Love as an emotion is fun. It's wonderful. It's easy. Love as an action is much more difficult. It's not as much fun but it can be just as wonderful. And maybe it seems a little strange that we'd have a scripture most commonly heard at weddings alongside the gospel we heard today. Now you might already know this, but that text wasn't written for like a couple in love, but for a community that was struggling to love each other. It probably could be written for our country today. Now, I don't know if Gandhi or Martin Luther King found inspiration in these words or not, but they certainly led and lived like they did. And we need more people who are willing to do just that. I've heard this text many, many times. But I will say that the middle part of it struck me a little differently this time. Love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoings, but rejoices in the truth. Last year, the film about Mr. Rogers' life came out, Won't You Be My Neighbor? Now, I haven't seen it yet, but I did watch a lot of Mr. Rogers as a kid. But I saw uh, somebody talking about the movie and, and one of the ways she described it was, a balm for our current climate of hatred and intolerance. If we all lived with love that wasn't envious, boastful, arrogant, rude, or insisted on its own way, 
I wonder how far that would go in our climate of hatred and intolerance. Loving like that is hard. Loving like that, though, doesn't mean you can't have your own convictions or passions. You can still have those, but it does require patience, which is the very first thing we heard in that scripture, that love is patient. Now, I've found that hurtful things and, and selfful things tend to spurt out rather quickly and easily. And as much as I enjoy social media, such as Facebook or Instagram, I've found that it's a hotbed of comments that are not loving. People showing intolerance to complete strangers, friends of friends even. And I don't think that's just on social media. I think it happens out and about too, where we just make assumptions and by looking at people or by a, what we think are a certain group of people. And while obviously Jesus didn't have social media at his time, he was up against some of these same things that we face today. Why else would they have wanted to throw him off the cliff? Most likely none of us will have the influence that Gandhi, Martin Luther King Jr., or even Mr. Rogers had. But hopefully we have the same desires, that we do have the same passion, but one thing I know for sure is that we do all have the love of Christ. And it's a love that can flow through us into our communities. It's not a love that's emotional or stagnant, but it's active and living and works for justice and peace in our world. And I hope it's something that we all want for our world. To love as Jesus loves. To be the change we wish to see in the world. Amen.